Hello everyone and welcome to my coloring corner. Today we are going to do our face uh, with the Caloria. I did the last ones with the Brute Funer squares. Uh, today we're going to use the Caloria. These are the two sets of pencils that I have used so far in the tutorials uh, in the adult coloring from the beginning tutorials. So I wanted to use these ones to give you an idea that you can definitely use the same colors in each set of pencils. Every set of pencils has something close to these colors, if not the same. So they may not be called the same thing, but if you can just look at the colors themselves, you will see that you will have the ability to find a color really close to it. Now we're going to do another light skin tone today. Um, the next one we're going to do, we're going to start darkening the skin and adding colors. So we're going to start doing darker skin as well as fantasy skin. Uh, fantasy skin is when you add um, greens, blues, purples, that sort of thing to the skin tone to give it more of a uh, fantasy look or to add different light castings on the on the skin and that's what we'll start doing as we progress through the the skin tones in the faces uh, tutorials so today we're like I said we're going to be using the Caloria this is my Caloria color chart so I have that handy so I know what colors I'm grabbing uh, without um, losing where I'm at so we'll put that there so I can see it, maybe. It doesn't want to stand there, so we'll put it there. All right, so the first thing that we want to use is a lavender gray. So the lavender gray gives us a, a good shadow color. I like to use the pinky purples or the uh, gray purples for that shadow color to give us a better um, base for that shadow. So, of course, once again, coming in to where the hair comes in. And that light is uh, making it difficult to see. So I'm going to turn it off. Now, this one is quite a bit lighter. These pencils do need a little bit more pressure. But try not to put too much pressure down so you don't kill the tooth of your paper. Again, following the hairline all the way down the ear. The lines on this picture are a thicker line, so you're going to have to go over top of the line a little bit, just so that you can get close to the hairline, like so. And you cannot see that very well at all, but you will be able to see it once I start adding other color. This is more of a pinky purple, so we're going to have a little bit more of a um, deeper peach color as we get to the shadow areas. Again, I'm not going to worry about her eyes. I am going to make sure that I shadow in her eyebrow area, or her eyelid area, I should say and then come down onto we're just concentrating on the face we're not doing anything with eyes or anything like that uh, once we get the skin tones uh, worked out on the basic skin tones and that sort of thing then we'll start moving on to other parts of a portrait page so if you're coloring a portrait page, uh, this will help you with your skin tones. I'm not going to get into the hair or anything else uh, at this moment. Right now we're just working on the skin tones themselves. Adding little bits of color for the blush tones as well as, you know, the lip tones. But mainly the skin tone itself. Now her head is turned slightly, so this part of her chin or neck is going to be shadowed by her chin. 
and this part of her chin is going to have less of a shadow because it's in the light more. And we're going to come down this part of the neck. Coming down the sides of the neck will give you more of a contour shadow. So as you know, your neck is not flat. It is not square. So you're going to have that contour shadow on the sides, giving it that more rounded appearance. And then the same down here, where we come into the neckline of her, her dress. Again, I know we did a light skin tone last week uh, with the Brute Funer Squares. I wanted to do the same type of skin tone with the Chloria just so that we could get a better feel for all of the different pencils that we've used, not just the Brute Funers. The Brute Funers are a fantastic pencil, especially for skin tones. They have a lot of great colors. The Caloria is a smaller set, so it does give you a limited palette, but sometimes that's better because then you don't have a lot of different colors to choose from and you don't find that you're confused on what color you should use. Just giving the cheek line a contour as well. Like so. All right, so there is our shadow. And then we're going to come in with our darker colors. So now we're going to come in with our deep peach color. So this is coral. So it's number 715. The first one was lavender gray, which is number 507. And we're going to come in with that coral right over top of the lavender gray, blending those two colors together and giving us a little bit of a peachy brown color, which is what we want for that shadow. Not going out of the um, lavender gray area too much, just a little bit so that we have something to blend into for the next color. Now you could do a base coat of whatever color you want for the lightest color, or you can build the color the way I do. Both are acceptable. Like if I was to put down a base layer of the lightest color and then start in with my grays and my, my uh, deeper tones, it would be um, a little bit lighter because the lighter color is already there to blend into. So that lighter color will blend out the colors on the darker colors, the deeper colors, which is not a bad thing. I do both ways depending upon the page itself. Um, I am showing you this way just because I find it to be uh, a little bit easier to control where I'm putting uh, each color and to show you where I'm putting each color. If I was to do it the other way, it may be a little bit more confusing on where to put the colors and how much of the color to put down. On this uh, image, it's very simple. Uh, very simple image, so finding where to put those colors is a lot easier. Um, once we start getting past the base uh, information, the basic information, uh, we will choose a page from a, a portrait book. Well, I will choose a page from a portrait book and we will uh, work on working it right into a book and showing you the differences between a grayscale um, portrait as well as a line art portrait. This is a line art portrait. If you are working on a grayscale portrait, uh, you can still use this information. Use your gray tones in the deepest areas of your shadow. So when you're working with grayscale, you have some, some darkened areas um, in your shadow lines as well as your contour lines. So you can use that information 
to to put your shadow in use that deepest color, deepest area in the deepest gray area and add your shadows to that area again I'm doing it with a very very light hand I'm not pressing hard on the pencil if you do uh, have a heavier hand you will find that you're only going to get one or two layers of each color which may not be enough the best way for you to train your hand to be light is to start off back here so if you're holding your pencil back here you can't put as much pressure on it to put down a heavy heavy layer now as you start understanding the feel of the pencil on the page you can start moving the pencil down moving your hand down the pencil but um, it took me a it took me a while not to not to press too hard on the pencil I was breaking pencils left right and center all right so there we have our peach color so that's coral now we're going to go in with apricot and like I said the colors in this uh, set are slightly different than the colors that are in the brute funers this set does have um, a lot lighter colors available as well as a little bit more of a yellow tone where the brute funer peach and corals and that sort of thing have a little bit more of a red tone this set has a little bit more of that yellow tone so as you know with peach and that sort of thing it's basically pink mixed in with orange and orange of course is red and yellow and peach or pink is red and white peach is basically an orange or a yellow mixed into a pink and these pencils do lean more to the yellow side which is fine it's definitely going to give us a different look than the brute funers did but it is still going to give you that that face color that's that skin tone look once we're done of course don't worry about the ugly teenage stage uh, you will find that you know it's it's going to look a little choppy it's going to look a little bit strange until you start getting the colors on and built up once you get the colors on and built up then you can use a blender color or a blender stick if you don't want any more color on the page and blend it all together and it will be like magic it will just suddenly be where you want it to be and it's it's the strangest uh, you know the strangest thing but it does occur so don't worry about the uh, as we call it in the uh, community the ugly teenage stage and no this is not any insults to to our teenagers out there it's just that that stage where you you're not sure what your what your attraction is all right so there we have our medium tone on her face now we're going to do the same thing on her neck and as you can probably tell I'm coming out from the shadow area into the center areas a little bit further I want this out a little bit further here and up through here this area here is going to have a little bit more shadow like I said she does have her head turned a little bit and I'm just lightening my hand just ever so slightly as I come into that area because I want to have something to blend into but I don't want to have it too too uh, too heavy and this side here is a lighter area so we're still going to come through here but we're going to be a little bit lighter with our hand this area here is the heavier area so we're going to bring that out just a little bit further 
and we're going to go a little bit heavier in that area. Then we're going to lighten up as we come down and then once again down here going to go a little bit heavier and then lighten it up as we come out. Again, if you find that you are a heavy-handed person, which is not a, um, it's not something that is wrong, quote unquote. Um, it is just different, and it is your style and the way you color. If you are a heavy-handed person, I would suggest doing your lightest tone first and building your layers on top of your light instead of building your layers and then adding your light. The reason for this is because as a heavy-handed individual, um, you will find that the tooth of the paper disappears very quickly and you can't get as many layers down as is needed to build that color up. So, or build that color down basically because we're starting with the dark and working our way into that light highlight area. So if you find that that is an issue for you, you can start with your lightest color and build your, your colors up to um, the darkest color using three or four pencils instead of one, you know, instead of five or six. Now, why don't I just use two or three pencils instead of that, you know, the, as many as I do is because as you build that color up, the colors change and it gives you more of a, a gradient going from light to dark. Where with, if you are a heavier handed individual, uh, you will find that going from your lightest color and adding just a few less colors and going into your your medium light and dark colors you will find that you still get a good skin tone it's not going to have as much depth uh, as some of the more built up skin tones but you will still have a good skin tone i do suggest practicing um, with your with your hand positioning on your pencil to lighten your hand when necessary. All right, the next color we're going to use is going to be uh, camel, which is going to tone down a little bit of this peachy brown, uh, peachy yellow color. Camel is a little bit of a brown. It's 823. And it works wonderfully for um, tanned colors in your skins. It also works really well with dropping down that yellow tone just a little bit. And I am going to sharpen my pencil. Sometimes when I'm layering, I do prefer that um, dull edge to my pencil, but I want to cut into this color just a little bit and build that color in. So having a sharper pencil helps you do that a little bit more. And like I said before, and I have said many, many times uh, during my tutorials, is this is not the only way to do skin tones. There are so many uh, really, really good YouTube artists out there uh, that are fantastic with coloring their skin tones that will walk through uh, step by step how they do it. Again, all of these things are how the artist that you're watching does it. This is not the right or wrong way of doing it. This is how I do it. Um, and like I said, if you uh, find that 
the way I do it is not comfortable for you or not enjoyable for you, um, I would definitely suggest watching other YouTube artists as well and find where you're comfortable. Even if it is just taking one or two bits from what I do and combining it with, say, one or two bits from what Emily uh, Illustrator does or what Shan uh, Color and Craft with Shani Blue does or, you know, little bits from, from all three of us or little bits of all, you know, all different YouTubers that you watch, it will give you a really good amount of information to find what works best for you. Again, this is not the right, not the wrong. This is just the way I do. And I have watched so many YouTubers uh, before I started actually enjoying skin tones. I would choose the smallest <laughs> picture uh, the smallest face picture possible um, if I was coloring say a fairy scape or something like that I would I would choose the one with the smallest fairy in it just so I wouldn't have to color a lot of skin because it, it scared me um, I didn't want to mess up the page because I didn't color the skin tone correctly so I wouldn't color skin tone uh, now, the next color we're going to use is Creamy Beige, which is number 112. And again, I'm going to sharpen this. This is, color is going to be our cover color. Uh, and then we are going to jump back into the apricot just to give us a little bit more color. And then we'll add our, our pinks and our... Um, Uh, reds for our cheeks and our lips and as you can probably tell this color is a lot more tanny uh, than the color that we did with the brute funers though it is fairly close it does give you that that bit of a tanned look And again, like I said, you know, once you've get your colors down, you can decide whether or not you need more shadow, whether or not you need more highlight, whether, you know, that sort of thing. If you find that your um, white spot is showing through too much, uh, whether or not you need to use your blender and that sort of thing. Now, I would not suggest using your blender until you have all of your um, colors down. But if you do use your blender just to just to blend those colors together and see where you're at with the blender um, on there, you can definitely do so. Just be very light-handed with your blending. Don't don't push really hard on your blender. Just very lightly bring the blender in and move those colors together to combine them without taking away the tooth of the paper. If you blend too harshly, you will find that you're going to blend that color that color right into the tooth of the paper and you may not have the ability to add other colors for your cheeks, for your lips, that sort of thing. Now, if you feel that you know you're at the point where you want to stop adding color, you can definitely stop adding color at any point uh, in the process. You don't need to use as many colors as I have used. Um, like I said, you you color the skin tone that the color that you want it to be. If you want it to be more peachy or, or more tanned, you can definitely take the, that last color, which was the caramel, and just extend it out and um, fully fill in all of those areas and uh, add your, your blush tones and that sort of thing to that. Now, I want it to have a little bit more of a highlight area, so I'm using this 
color for our highlight areas, which is blending in to those colors dulling them down just a little bit so that we don't have too much of a heavy peach color and bringing that tan color into into the, the forefront a little bit more. So depending upon how you want your your portrait to look if you're following a tutorial or something else and the person that's coloring is coloring the skin tone very very pale you may not want to use that camel color just to avoid having that bright color on there and instead of using say the the peach you may want to use say the ivory now we are going to blend now that I look at it we're going to blend with a bit of ivory just to fill in the white spot and not add a whole lot of color to it but not tone it down with a white because I like the color combination I like the way that the colors are coming up but there is still a lot of white spot and that sort of thing so I'm going to go back to our purple first of all so I'm going to rebuild that that layer. And I'm going to move that over here so I can actually reach it without going around you. So we're just going to build in that layer a little bit deeper. Let that pink come through now. As you can see now that pink is coming through a little bit heavier. That's because of the colors that are on the page. Now if I was to do the lighter colors first and then put in the shadows and the deeper colors I would have seen more of that pink color instead of the purple shadow color that I wanted underneath. Now I'm not going to do this in all the areas just the deeper shadow areas where I feel that the shadow isn't standing out as much as I want it to. Right. And, and use your best judgment. If you like the way this looks, leave it alone. Don't worry about it. If you feel that your shadows aren't sticking out or standing out as much as you want, take your colors and redo them in those areas. If you feel that it, this is turning a little bit too pink, go with a more blue muted gray. So um, a lavender which has a little bit more blue in it instead of the uh, lavender gray. All right. And then we're going to come in with our coral and I'm just building that color up putting in the exact same colors that we already used pretty much in the exact same place that we've already used it and just building the color up giving the color an extra layer of so it stands out a little bit more. A little bit more never hurts. Alright. And even though it does feel a little bit repetitious, uh, going over these areas with the same colors. Basically what you're doing is you're filling in that tooth of the paper. So you're giving that color more um, depth when you blend. So when you blend all of that tooth is going to have that color in it. So you're not going to have to worry about whether or not you're going to blend that color out of the tooth. Now the next color we're going to use is the apricot and this is the peachier of the colors. So like I said before this one has a bit more of a yellow to it. And 
and I was thinking that I might want to bring it into the other color, but I think I don't want to. I think I want to leave that alone, but I am going to bring it out a little bit further. Again, using a light hand in areas that I'm, I'm extending it. So in the area that I've already colored with it, I'm using about a, a little bit heavier than a light pressure. And then where I'm extending it out, I'm lightening my hand so that I don't overtake the color that's there, but blend into it a little bit. down here. I'm going to blend into the colors that we've already laid down. Just darkening up those little areas that I feel need to have that extra bit of color because once we bring the ivory in it's going to lighten those colors up a little bit. Before we bring the ivory in, we're going to add her cheeks. So we're going to use Peony, which is number 527. And we're going to start adding her cheek line. Now Peony is a very light pink. So we're not going to worry too much about it being too bright. And I am coming down under her hairline here a little bit on the side of her cheek and then coming into that cheek line. Now the cheek line should be from the corner of her eyebrow down, but with this picture the way that it's drawn, the, if you were to do that you may find that uh, your cheek line is covering into her eye and we don't want her eye to be red <laughs> or pink. <laughs> and again, I'm just coming through. Now, if you want her cheeks to be brighter or rosier, I guess, uh, you can definitely use Flamingo or Cotton Candy. Um, I would go more with the Cotton Candy or even the Lilac than the flamingo. The flamingo is a little bit more of a brighter pink. The lilac um, would be good because it would blend in quite nicely with the uh, grayed lavender that we've already put down. And you would get a softer edge to, to the blend when it gets over to the edge here. Now I am putting a light pressure on this. I am blending that into the color that's there and softening up that edge. Now where I've laid down the color and I want that color to be more intense, I am putting a medium pressure on that area where I want that color to taper off and start being softer. I'm just using a very soft, soft touch. All right, and I know it looks a little strange right now, and it will momentarily uh, until we blend it out. And we are going to do that with the ivory and then with the blender. Again, bringing it out and softening it up as we come down. And blending those colors together over there. All right. Now we're going to come in with our ivory, which is a creamy yellow tone. So this is going to give us a little bit more of that peach color on her cheeks and a little bit more of the tan color on her skin. Now if I find that this is too yellow, OK, 
because it is looking a little bit more yellow than I wanted it to, we may give up on the ivory and just use white. And I think it's going to be fine. And I'll probably still use a blender because I am going very light-handed with it and with all my colors. So there is still quite a bit of tooth in the paper. And in order to soften up some of those colors and some of those lines, and I am going in circular motions blending all of those colors together. Like so. The one thing I really like about using a blender uh, is that it does give you the ability to bring all those colors together without adding any additional color. Um, if I do find that the color is too dark, I will use the white to draw that color down a bit to, to bring in that lighter, um, softer look. Now when I use a white, normally what I would use is the white Prismacolor. The reason for this is because it's fairly opaque and the one of the things that I like to use uh, the white for is to tone down the color as well as blend. So if I'm blending with the Prisma white, I want that color to be toned down and the opaqueness of the Prismacolor white does that very well. Now if you don't want that color to be taken down uh, and you want that color to be as deep as you have it, definitely do not use the Prismacolor white. Um, if you have a white in your um, pencil set, um, take that white and use it in a, in a corner where it's the darkest. And if it tones it down too far for you, just use a blender pencil. Um, these are a wax base, so the blender pencil that I would use on a wax base pencil uh, would be the Caran Dash blender stick or the Caran Dash blender pencil. The reason being is that Caran Dash is a, um, the blender is a wax base and it blends really, really well with those wax pencils. Now I have found some pencils that the Caran Dash does not work well on. The uh, Brute Funers and the um, uh, Chloria are not any of those pencils that that does not work well on. I do find that it does not, it does work on oil-based pencils, but not on all of them. Some of them I do find that the, the uh, Derwent blender works better. And as um, beginners, you may not have a clue of what I'm talking about, and that's perfectly fine. All right, so the next colors that we're going to use are for her lips, and we're just going to go with the same colors for her cheeks. So I'm going to sharpen this. So we're going to just use the peony pink and we're going to come down in a curve and come down in a curve, joining in and come up. I am not good at drawing at all. So um, it is the fault of the digital program that I use to, to create this uh, for not putting in proper lips. I'm just saying. 
that is just terrible. I should erase that and just I'm just actually going to color that whole thing in. <laughs> and then we'll take a darker pencil and separate them. Um, because, yeah, that was just terrible. All right. And then we're going to take a deeper pencil. And we're just going to put a little bit of separation. I am terrible at this. Sorry. <laughs> Just trying to bring it down so it's fairly even, even though the picture itself is not even. And then I'm just going to blend it. leaving a highlight as well as the darker area. And you can you can practice with lips and all that sort of stuff. Um, like I said, I am not good at drawing at all. <laughs> so I, I'm not doing all that great at putting in these lips. If you're good at drawing, you will have a much smoother um, ability than me. <laughs> All right, so there we have that. Not going to mess with it anymore because I will I will mess it up even more. So now we're going to sharpen our. No, actually this one this one still has life to it. So the one thing I like about the blender stick, uh, the Caran Dash bright stick, and now this is a full blender bright stick. The entire thing is a blender. So even if you get down to this point, you can still use the entire thing to blend. And it just brings all those colors together. Now, one of the reasons why I do like using them smaller like this is because you can't put as much pressure on them. So even if you wanted to um, burnish the tooth out of the page, you may find that you still can add little bits of color if you need to. I don't think we need any more color. I think the color is pretty good. Just be careful going over the lip area that you don't pick up that that color. I am just gently taking down that lip color out of the blender. If you are going to go over the lip area and blend the lips, make sure that you have a paper towel or something close by to wipe that red off your blender before you go back into your other colors. So as you can see, there's a little bit of red on the blender there. So wipe that off, either with your hand, with your um, paper towel, whatever. I usually just use my, my fingertips, especially on this small one. So, But you can use a paper towel or a cloth, or depending upon how much color you have on there. I also have a tendency to, to wipe it off on my trousers or <laughs> pretty much anywhere. Anywhere I feel that is close enough to wipe it off. It's not going to damage anything. It's just a little bit of color. But if you don't wipe it off, you will transfer it where you don't want it to be. So if you're doing really, really dark colors and you don't want that transferred to your lighter colors, wipe off your blender. Go in different directions so that you get a 
even equal blend. You find that one side is, is not looking as blended as the other. Turn the paper and blend it that way as well. All right, so as you can see down here, it's not blended, but up here it's blended, and it's much smoother, much softer. And that's the, the thing about blenders is you can just blend those edges nice and smooth into each other, softening that transition area going from your dark to your light. Like so. All right, so the, once again, the colors that we've used for the skin tones themselves, and once again, you do not need to use all of these colors. Um, we started off with the purple, and this is our sh main, our first shadow color. So I'm going to put this purple up here, and I'm going to write down the number, and we'll talk about the reason why I use purple and how to to utilize that in in your coloring. Purple is great for skin tone, basic uh, light skin tone shadowing. The reason for this is because it does have a pink undertone which gives you the ability to blend into it as you move your pencils through. Um, I need my pen. It's in this bucket. I know it is. I just saw it. There it is. <laughs> so this one here is number 507, lavender gray. So number 1, 507, lavender gray. All right. And with the lavender gray, and I, I spelt it the different way, right uh, on the pencil it's G-R-E-Y, not G-R-A-Y. I don't know why I'm used to spelling it G-R-A-Y, but I am. So the reason why I use lavender gray and a lavender gray tone in a lot of my skin tones is it gives you that um, pink undertone to blend into. And number two is going to be uh, 715. coral and I bring this into the lavender gray giving us that shadow tone giving us that darker peach tone basically what it does is it it gives us that that ability to build that skin tone and have a deep shadow and then number three is apricot, which is number 718. And again, coming into it, it's a peachier tone, but it's going to tone down those colors together. Like so. And then number four is creamy beige, which is number 112. And as you will see here, it's a lighter peach tone, has a little tiny bit of a brown in it, a little tiny bit of a gray in it. So once you bring that into it, it will tone down all those other colors. And then the final one that I used, which gives us a little bit more of that lighter tone, is 823, which is camel. So 
So these are our basic skin colors. Now you can put the camel down first and go over it with the creamy beige if you find that the camel is too brown. And I do believe that's what I did, is I found the camel was a little bit too brown, so I switched those two. And those two are interchangeable. So this one here is a little bit darker, a little bit light. So depending upon the look that you want, you will you may find that you want to switch those around. Now our blend color is ivory. So number six blend. is number 111 ivory and this is also optional so if you want to have that little bit of a highlight a little bit of that blend um, with a touch of a yellow undertone you can use the ivory and as you can probably see here it's not a very very dark color it's very light but it does have that little tiny bit of yellow in there. So when you use that little tiny bit of yellow over top of something that is um, has a deeper yellow base, such as the peach tones here, you're going to bring that yellow out just a little bit. And then for our lips, what's this one? That's skin tone. For our lips and our cheeks, we did number seven, which is a 527 peony. Which is a very, very light pink. It isn't the lightest pink that you can ever find in a set, but in this set it is one of the lightest pinks that are, that is in the set. Now again, the brightness or lightness of the pencil depends upon the pressure that you put on the pencil. If you are really heavy handed on this pencil, you may find that it's too bright of a pink. If you do find it's too bright of a pink, blend it down with your yellow or with a white. If you add white to this, of course, it's going to end up lighter. And the next one that we used specifically on the lips was number eight, which is 611, which is deep magenta. And I'm going to put here lips only. And this is just the defining color for giving her lips some definition. And of course, these two colors here are optional. You can do the lips and the cheeks, any color that you choose to do. All the colors are optional, of course. But these are just the colors that I would use in this set to create a, a lighter tanned skin tone. It even has you know, a light color to it. Now this is much deeper than the skin tone for the Prisma colors, uh, as I was saying before. Now if I can find my sheet, <laughs> I put it away thinking, um, yeah, I need that next week. And do you think I put it away somewhere where I would know where it is? Of course not. Uh, I know I put it away somewhere where I'd be able to reach it quickly. Oh, I need to. You would think with the new place that I would have everything all nicely organized and everything else. 
and I did, but not as well. So as you can see here, they're fairly close. Um, there is a little bit more of a whiter tone to this one here than this one here. Uh, the peach, t the pink tone in the cheeks is a little bit more red than over here. But you can build pretty much the exact same coloring, the exact same skin tone with the lesser expensive set of the Caloria as well as with the Brute Puner. The colors themselves are pretty much the same. The gray lavender, the gray purple color does have more red in it in the Brute Funers than it does in the uh, Caloria. But otherwise, most of the colors are fairly close to the same. All right, and of course, here we have the small one. So when you are doing your small, uh, both of these are available and will be uh, posted below the video, are available on the first video where we use the Brute Funers. So if you want to download these and print them out, you can definitely do so. You can write down, like I have Brute Funer squares and that skin tone done. This one here will be the Caloria and I'll have that skin tone done. And then, or I can do the Caloria here, put it up there, and then we can do different skin tones in those two, two different um, colored pencil sets. We may even add a third just so that you can see the differences between uh, budget brands as well as some of the um, medium brands, the medium cost brands, things like that. All right, guys, so that is how I'm going to use these charts is I'm going to color a full page for you guys to see. I'm going to transfer that color combination onto these smaller charts so that once we're done, we can take a look at all of the different colored pencils and the different abilities for different colors all on one sheet. Uh, once we get to a point where we're past the basic colors of light and dark, we'll start moving into um, fantasy colors and things like that may even grab one of uh, Christine Caron's um, pages. She has some absolutely gorgeous portraits with some really good grayscale. And I'll show you how to utilize her grayscale to dictate and to show you where to add those shadows and those, those contours. So that is what is coming up in the adult um, tutorial. Uh, adult coloring from the beginning tutorial series. Uh, we've just basically touched the tip of the iceberg uh, with skin tones. There is so much information with skin tones. Please don't let it um, be too much for you. Uh, if you do find that you're starting to feel confused or over um, stimulated with things, just go back to the basics. The basics is putting in your shadow and extending into the center of the page where the light source is going to be, things like that. Don't overstress things. Don't overthink them. Just be basic. Now you can, like I said, you can do a basic skin tone with just three colors and I sh will quickly show you how here. Uh, on this little swatch here. Using the Calorias, we're going to take three different colors. Now, instead of using the gray for our shadow area, we're going to use coral. And the reason for this is it's going to give us that deep color up under the hairline and everything else, but it's also going to give us that, that peach tone undertone that we need. So we're going to start off with coral and then we're going to go into our creamy beige. Actually, nope, I got the wrong one. So we're going to go into our apricot, taking over right over top of the coral 
extending it out like so again fairly fairly um, medium pressure if you're using a really heavy hand um, that's fine as well but try not to use a heavier hand if you are heavy handed again move your hand to the back of your pencil and just use the side of your pencil which will give you the ability to lighten up a little bit on it because you don't want to break your pencil if you're breaking your pencil you have too much pressure on your hand all right and then creamy beige so these would be your three colors for your skin tone and this of course would be your highlight color so you just blend all those colors together with that highlight color and then you can just take your blender and smooth over the edges smooth over the lines and bring those colors all together and that that will make a very nice skin tone so you don't have to use all of these colors all of these colors what they do is they give you depth and they give you contour and that sort of thing highlights and everything else if you just want to start very basic you can start with this three color combination of coral which is number 715 so I'm going to put a three color combo so number one would be 715 coral Number two would be 718 apricot. And number three would be 112 creamy beige. All right. So that is definitely something that you can do if, if this whole thing is too much for you. Start off with your basics and then work your way into that. If, if this is easier for you, do so. All right, guys, with that, uh, I would like to say thank you all very much for watching. Of course, always remember to like, comment, and subscribe to any YouTube artist that you enjoy. And like I said before, I'm going to put the name here. Uh, so, uh, like I said before, make sure that uh, you check out other... Um, artists as well there are so many different um, YouTube artists out there that do color a lot of portraits and their skin tones are absolutely gorgeous um, watch and and gather as much information that you would use and combine all of that information together to give yourself your own way of doing it you don't have to do it the way that anybody else does if something works better for you and is more comfortable for you definitely feel free to do so all right guys with that always remember to relax color and stay safe until next time bye bye for now